Welcome to H Plus H Connect, the podcast series that brings you insights and inspiration to enhance your business, creativity, and overall inspiration. I am Darren Stern, the show director for H Plus H Americas and a vice president at Colmes Inc. based in Chicago. In this episode, we are delighted to have Jessica and Jamie from Suitites joining us. They are here to share their journey, insights on driving business forward, and how they maintain their effective, creative, and productive business. We'll also touch on the excitement surrounding H Plus H Americas and why it's an event you won't want to miss. So let's dive into our conversation with Jessica and Jamie from Suitites. Welcome to the H and H Connect Podcast Show. This month we have our friends Suitites. Suitites also exhibited with us this past May. We have Jessica and Jamie joining us today. Thank you for coming online with us. Thanks for having yes. us. Today, we're going to go through and have our conversation. And I want people to learn about your business, learn about what inspires you, how, what you want to share with individuals of how they can drive their business forward, and how are you organized to make sure you're an effective, creative, and productive business. Also, we're going to talk a little bit about H&H &H Americas and maybe share a few things and give some people some excitement of why they need to show up. So let's start out with a very simple question. How did you get here? Like, why the crafting marketplace? Why did you pick this sector? How did you find yourself here? Do you want to say that, Jamie, or me? <laughs> I think you can go ahead. Okay. We lucked into this business. It's been the most kind of magical thing, but to not get too long-winded because I tend to get love telling this story and I tend to get a little long-winded at times. Jamie and our mom, Jamie and I are sisters and our mom and she both really love quilting and sewing. And as you know, now she owns the quilt shop, but when we first started, she didn't. And uh, we started a fabric subscription box with our parents and then Jamie was sewing a bag and happened to use magnets for sewing a bag handle on the bag. And then we took them to QuiltCon and prototyped them and handed them out. And everyone loved them. And so we found ourselves being actually sought after by distributors within six months of talking about sew tights for the first time in 2018. And then we've just grown from there very part-time initially. And now we're a team of four people and we have, I think, 13, 18 different products, but like almost 30 different SKUs now. And we just listen to what people have to say and what they need. And we just like to magnetize everything, apparently. I always, I tell people that it's like Frank's Red Hot Sauce. We put that shit on everything. I like the analogy because that's how I grew up. Uh, that Frank's Red Hot is absolutely, <laughs> yes, it can go on anything. Uh, great. That, thank you for that. And it's for that, it, the starter story there. Uh, and it's to me, it's always amazing so much in this sector, like the family business aspect, right? Like it's you hear about different events that trust, pass down through generations within businesses. You hear of other fabric brands that are family run. You see the same thing in the knit, in the knitting world is their family businesses. Mm -hmm. Would you say that's a pro? Is that a con? Cause sometimes my, from my upbringing, my dad says you never do business with your family, um, because family's forever and <laughs> sometimes businesses are not. How is that from your current experience? Obviously you're on the call today and you're still, I'm going to go with loving sisters cause you have the great smile. We saw so like going on here. But, is how do you like the challenges that come with being a family business? What what would you share from your personal experiences of how you found how you manage it that you might share with other people looking to launch their family business? Okay, as I say, you can answer this one. Um, honestly, we've never really found it challenging. We do live apart, which I don't know if that helps or hinders, but Jessica lives in Montana. I live in Calgary. I feel like the businesses have brought us closer together, actually, because we're chatting about business, but there's always personal in there. And we just chat more because we have business. Our brains work very differently, whereas Jessica is more of a 
artsy, is that the right side of the brain? Whatever side of the brain. I don't know which one it is. And then it. I am like numbers and I, I have a, I am an engineer. I have a degree in engineering. So like I'm very much numbers and not that. So when we first started so tights, I did numbers and Googled how to manufacture and ship and stuff. And Jessica was working on our packaging and our making stuff look good. And so it's just been where one, we just fill in the gaps. Now, Jessica, I fill in very few gaps since I'm at this department. At, at first, it was very just, we just did what needed to be done. There wasn't like any, you do this, I do this. It was just like, I know that's a strength of mine, or I know this is a strength of yours. Can you please do this? Put, putting on your boots and get, let's get dirty. That's right. Yeah. Right. It's been really, it's been really like very fun, really, actually. I think we've only, I don't even know if we've had one disagreement, really. Maybe a couple like lately, like disagree with you right now conversation, but nothing like completely. We're pretty much in alignment on major decisions in general. So, yeah. Nice. And going through that, like being, as you said, like the family business, being in two different cities, being in two different countries. And, man, you know, and, and manufacturing is probably one place, warehouse is another, right? The whole, di the land of being a distributed organization. Can you speak to the initial challenges and maybe what types of solutions you folks implemented to make you a profitable, functional, and efficient business? Oh my gosh. In 30 <laughs> seconds or less. No, no. <laughs> but if you were to pass along, again, like that idea, like if someone's Oh, I have a widget. How did you do it? Like, how would you convey like the, the bullet points or the top things like to really consider? Was there a particular investment looking back now that you might say, I wish we did X earlier, whether it's something like having a CRM system or just being, making sure that we can talk on a daily basis, whether it's an organizational solution and, or maybe it's a technology solution. Uh, is there something that you can share this, like those words of wisdom to help the new person coming along? Uh, I think one thing is just Google is your friend. You can learn to do just about anything on the internet. So we never manufactured products before this. We had no idea how to do it. We did have a kind of a very serendipitous background because my background is marketing and graphic design as jamie mentioned she's an engineer and we both had read some books and had some exposure to things where we knew some things had an idea about some things but and then like obviously like website development that's been my thing i mean we i've been work creating shopify sites for a decade and i was able to just do that myself didn't have to outsource it but Probably Google's your friend. You're going to fail, but failure is learning. Just keep doing like the next right thing and try to, people always say like smallest viable product, which we accident we did accidentally. Like we just, we didn't know what this was going to be. And, and we still sometimes mess up on that. <laughs> we launch a product and we think it's going to be well received and it hardly sells. But then other ones completely knock it out of the park. There's that. And then we are right now currently learning the uh, lesson of warehousing is a whole nother ball game of figuring out. <laughs> we are, have not been good at estimating space. So we moved into like actually our first warehouse because we were operated out of garages and stuff like that till just this last fall. But we are out of space already, and we have nine months left on our lease. Luckily, it wasn't a multi-year lease. But I'm now hiring a consultant who has background in estimating warehousing needs and based upon your sales velocity and as you add. But stuff you can still Google, but I did Google it, and I did not do it right. Uh, yeah, I, I just... 
I think networking too and relying on resources and stuff, but. So it's almost like being able to admit knowing what you don't know. Yeah, absolutely. Like yeah. it, it yeah. doesn't make you less smart, doesn't make you less professional, doesn't make you any less unsuccessful, yeah. but to say, I don't know a lot about this. And you right. can go down a rabbit hole of YouTube and probably TikTok and all the other platforms and all the other places and read forums beyond belief. But sometimes it's just more efficient, easier, and maybe it voids a few mistakes along the way to bring in an outside expert to help in particular areas. And probably in the long run, less expensive. Like you might be afraid to spend right. money on it, but in the long run, it'll probably save you money. And I will say too, from our, when we started, one of the things that we did, because we were just two moms, this product, we outsourced fulfillment too, was one of our fact yeah, like the original question we went to a because we couldn't deal with fulfillment and all that stuff so we went to a fulfillment center and eventually came to the point where we self-fulfill now and it's just like Jessica said learning from your mistakes not getting discouraged and you just keep going and not yeah not being afraid you know and not being afraid to spend money honestly also, also. spend uh, money on shows like ancient stuff. Um, I'm a part of a, of a group of quilt vendors, quilt show vendors, and a lot of people say, "I think I might be ready to go to this X big show," and they're doing these smaller shows, and it's we didn't even know. We just went to the big ones <laughs> and spent the money right out of the gate, and it's been good because we networked and met all the people and stuff. And as a small business. I think with my background in marketing, like we were okay with spending, if we really looked at it, probably an obscene amount of money on marketing, knowing it was an investment and that it would return. Since you've gone down that road, let's just keep driving on the street here. You saw, as you say, marketing background, you launched your idea knowing with confidence that spending on marketing will pay back in time. Why trade shows? Why live events, whether it's a consumer show, a business to business show, why would you, why do you put such an emphasis on that versus where sometimes people say, I can just do a Zoom meeting. I can just do, I can just put me up myself up on TikTok store and that's all I need. Like, I don't need to be somewhere else. What is, because I'm guessing you have a different opinion because you've already said that you like events and you invest heavily in them. Mm -hmm. Why, why did you, and maybe why should someone think about that? Go ahead, Jamie. I feel like that's a question for oh. you. <laughs> um, so yeah. Oh gosh, it's just they're yes, they are an investment, absolutely. And when you're just starting out and you're thinking of spending ten, fifteen thousand dollars on a show, you're just like, OMG. But you have to think about it in the long term. We generally make our money back in a show, at the show, but we also, there's so much long tail, both from a consumer show and a wholesale show, that it's so important to building our business, as well as just like the connections, the ideas. We'll come back from a show and I'll have, I actually just, we returned from QuiltCon just a couple weeks ago. I had a list of 48 things to work on and follow up on and even just slight product feedback that we have. We collect reviews, but we don't always see or hear in those in person. We hear people saying things and it sparks an idea. Um, there's, it's just, there's nothing like in person, especially in a collection of people that are in the industry. You can network with all the people that are all vendors. We actually prior to H&H being a, a thing, we went to market, quilt market in Houston, and we only walked the floor. That's all we did for the first four or five years. We didn't even pay for a booth and we just would network with all of the vendors. So we've actually only had a booth at market for one year. We vended at festival, the consumer show for some, quite a few, but, and that in itself, because also we have a new product. So it, we were getting people to use our product and try our product who are influencers and in, well-known in, 
industry people also, obviously distributors and stuff like that. So it's just invaluable, really. I don't, when like COVID happened, it was horrible. COVID was good for our business because people stayed home and sewed, but it was like the online like networking just didn't work. Yeah. To mm -hmm. me, I always go back to we're humans. Humans yeah. like to be human. If mm -hmm. we didn't, then I don't know what those crowded bars are on Friday nights when you're 20 something. It seems to be even with internet dating and all these or 40 things, something. I don't know. <laughs> we still seem to be going to bowling alleys. We still go to bars. We still go to restaurants. We still go to museums because we're humans. Mm -hmm. And to, that to me is very true. Like it's just that human interaction or a lot of times I like to tease companies. You can talk about how strong your magnets are, or you can talk about how pink the product is or the red or whatever, or soft or scratchy, whatever it might be, but you can't see that through a screen, right? I could shake it and say, oh, look, it doesn't show off. How do I know it's not glued or whatever might be going on? Being able to mm -hmm. put the magnet on and say, look at this, it doesn't move or look how it holds the, the project together while you do your work. Right. It's something you sometimes want to put your hands on and feel. Absolutely. Yeah. Especially our product, sometimes we need a little explaining. So people will come up and say, oh, I've seen this online, but I don't really get it. And then we show it to them and you see the light bulb go on or a new product, the cutting system. Watch them use it and how it helps them with their cutting. But I do agree that I think the show, whether it's a consumer show or a business to business show, is the networking. Like the fr friends that we have made in the industry from going to show they're like second family and you look for i look forward to going to that show because we get to see our friends that we only get to see once a year you think and and those then that it just helps grow your network in a way that targeted ads or whatever may not get you and it's really in a short period of time. Like you could try and build that kind of a network online, but you're going to be online all the time, like working on that daily, trying to work on building that. I like, like the, last. Yeah. Sorry, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I mean, last year at H to meet, we met Maurice Green, and right. Well, let's come back to him in a minute because we're going to talk about the Content <laughs> Creative Summit and, and your sponsorship of the program. But I want to save that for a moment because he is a unique person and. Uh, a very, he's a very interesting, fun guy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like in putting words into your mouth, like the idea or the concept that we tend to run into is reminding people, one, H&H &H America's it's for you. It doesn't matter how you make your living in crafts, whether you're a quilt shop, a creator, a con, a educator, a designer, the, you will find something for you in the event. But then the, even more important is the investment in oneself. You have to invest in yourself. You have to invest in your business. If you want to be a business and you want to drive your business and have a successful business, you have to make some kind of investment, whether it's attending an education class, sitting at lunch and have, meeting someone who probably has the same problems you are so you can make a friend and find out that there's a community of people that you don't have to go through it alone, that someone's been there and done that, and you might mm -hmm. be able to learn from them. And that to us is why one of the reasons what's our passion is connecting people. Yes, we have a digital platform to connect people and we have a way to do it virtually throughout the year. But that the three days, you can't meet as many people as you can meet at a trade show. Or if you're sourcing mm -hmm. product this year, we are upwards of about 366 vendors, I think, at the moment. And still growing. So you can't possibly talk to everyone. You couldn't actually go look at every booth and take an appointment at every booth and learn about all the products. Mm -hmm. So now, as you're so about H&H, &H, why are you excited for H&H &H this year? What's either on your agenda to achieve? And I would ask this as two different questions. One, because we have a shop owner here. So maybe from a shop owner point of view, but then all, and then the flip side from a, a supplier or a item mm -hmm. maker point of view, from either what you've heard people saying, your own personal well, goals and interests, Maybe you're not excited. Maybe you'll tell me, Darren, we're not excited, but we bought the booth, dude, we're coming. No, but what has you, what's the excitement? What are you most looking for? And then I think we're 59 days now and counting down. I think for both as a shop owner and as a, 
a vendor at H and H, kind of both. Like for me, H and H just provides such a wide selection of products that we don't see at other shows because it is like crafting as a whole, not just specifically sewing or quilting or knitting or whatever. Like it's like everyone, which is really because so many of our consumers do more than one thing. It's so it's cool to see essentially for me, a whole other industry that I, cause I'm not a knitter or anything like that, but to see that and to see some things that I had never seen before to bring in for our customers. But then as a vendor also, because there's such a wide variety of vendors, the attendees are diverse as well. So someone might be exposed to us that never would have at if, if we only attended market or whatever. Yeah. Be, so it's a whole new level of exposure. And then to your part of like market research from a product, you know what you know, but you don't know how someone else might be like, oh my God, this solves the problem for me doing X. And you're like, I never would have thought of that because I don't do that craft or I don't think you don't, you're not in that space. Right. So why would you think about that way? But with that crossover, mm -hmm. it's almost the opportunity for market expansion is amplified because you don't know what not, you don't know what you're not asking. Yeah. I think one of the things that I, from my perspective too, and a marketing perspective, I just think that you guys are doing a great job with the show. It's obviously very much growing. And, and in our industry, I think you were very heavy the first couple of years in knitting and, and crochet and stuff like that. And now the quilt people are, are coming in more. And I think that really speaks a testament to what you're doing. And then we're also trying to cross promote. So we're trying to slowly get into the the knitting and crochet. We just, our name says so in it. So it's a little hard to um, do. And we keep, you know, coming up with new products that just serve our current industry. But so that's good. But also I think some of the things that you're doing to, that are more the content creator summit is that what it's called? Yes. That's, well, the, the summit part we're, is new this year. Correct. Yeah. So like, we're a part of, I'm really excited about that, especially after learning more about it. We did participate in the kind of the evening that you had last year with that. And, we, and like Jamie mentioned, we met Maurice Green as well as several other people who are influencers. Influencers and affiliates have been a huge catalyst for growth for us. Like dramatic and so meeting more of those people and getting connected to people that we wouldn't other otherwise is great as well as i'm sharing some knowledge too i think that's what's going to be part of the uh, platform this year we might be on some panels and stuff to teach other people like we, we definitely don't believe that the world is just like a pie we can share knowledge and other people can learn from it and it can benefit their business as well so I think some of the things that you're doing are just something that we haven't really seen before and I think are really good and important for all of us in, in the industry. Yes. One, thank you for your support of the program. So yes, what we've done this year where we've had a, a special reception to speak to that content creator influencer community. And we'll, one of the feedbacks that we received was that there, there's more that needs to be done. Because, and it was on both sides. There are creators and influencers that may not understand how to run their business. How do you value yourself? How do you make brand deals? How do you make sure both sides are living up to their bar the end of their bargain? How do they expand what they're doing? And on the flip side, many manufacturers and suppliers, distributors, the exhibitors of our show still need to learn how do you use that marketing medium? How, why do you use a work? Why do you work with a content creator? It's not just about giving them free product, that it's actually something different, or how do you hold them accountable? And that whole experience is what we're trying to foster through the education program this year, where we're with partnership with Go Sadies, our content partner, helping us organize the whole program. We then have a number of different sponsors, you being one of them, who are participating in the program as well to make it all possible for individuals. But I want to back up to our friend Maurice Green here. Just because as you're listening to this, we don't, maybe I'll put up a photo. We'll do a part of this video. Can you just explain who he is? Why did you 
what made him unique that you wanted to pick him to work with him as one of as a, a as an influencer or as a creator to, or an ambassador? It's funny. There's many different words that describe what this group of people actually I think provide. Yeah, we met lots of people. He was just one that ended up. We we were able to continue to or work on that very quickly that relationship, and so he's the crochet boss on Instagram, and he is an MMA fighter. The MMA. I'm not really <laughs> aren't huge into the fighting scene, but and then he crochets, so he's got a decent following, and is just super unique, a very nice guy, and everything. And and then he did have a fight on ESPN, like a title or semi final <laughs> fight. Yeah. That we in, yeah, for the new the MMA that he's in, and in the so that was fun because we sponsored him for that so we got to see our name in lights on espn and stuff and but yeah he's just like a great guy and he's because he's crochet he's helping us at least start to dabble more in the fiber arts um side of things for knitting and crocheting and how you might use our products for that and yeah we just we like to work with anybody who wants to work with us too. So it's just, it's, and he was great. And yeah, so it's just a fun thing. We wouldn't we'll, have met him otherwise. We'll challenge you maybe to come back on the show in the future and see if you could figure out being on ESPN. Have you seen a shift? There's a way to track it. There are more <laughs> men buying product now, or there are men now saying, huh, he's doing, he crocheted his Afghan. So I'm going to try to crochet. And I'm curious to see, can, can we get it? a gender shift or a demographic shift in customers for between that relationship and being on a channel like that. There are a lot of men that do crochet, right? And maybe don't, people don't realize it. I think that's happening in general in the craft world is that there are becoming more and more men who are doing those things. But as far as whether or not we know if something happened to result of ESPN, that's really hard to track. It's not... <laughs> From a marketing perspective, that's just like a brand spin. That's just like exposure. There's no way to know if it increased sales. But it was a fun thing to be a part of. And we did do it as but just this is a, a way to support him and what he's doing. And and it's fun to it was fun for us to be on ESPN. Oh. Absolutely. And part of it is we're all in this business because we want to have fun. Yes, we want to make a living. Yes, we want to do good. Yes, we want to be valuable people to the world, but also it's important to have fun. So that's, yeah. it's nice that you brought that into the situation. Yeah. Anything else you want to share of, again, what might excite people to make sure that they come by and see you? You folks are in booth 1129. So please stop by and see them when you're at the show. But is there anything you, you want to, share that either tease something or encourage people to say, oh my God, they have to come by the booth. Besides that, they're lovely individuals and everyone should come by and just say hello anyway. <laughs> but is there anything you can offer us today as a little tease um, to maybe drive some more traffic? Yeah, so we um, we will have a couple of new products expanding our So Magnetic Cutting System product line that we launched at last year's H&H. Another mat size as well as probably... We still are finalizing the product list, but one or two new ruler sizes as well. And then um, a product that we actually have launched already, but will be shipping starting in H&H &H, is a magnetic quilt hanging system for quickly hanging and swapping out your quilts. So people are able to come by and, and check that out and purchase or, or order it. So um, we will have plenty of new things at the show. So yes. Yes. And also, because as you said, you have a lot of things with the quilting side. You also have to stop by and see like, how is Morning Grease using the product? Like how it does work in the fiber side, right? Yeah. When you're, if you're crocheting or knitting something, there is a purpose for the product. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate you being on today's show. It's been wonderful to share information together. I hope people find what we shared today interesting. And more importantly, that we can inspire at least one new person to join us in May and learn about the show, learn about you. And just as we say, have a little fun with our community. Thank you so much for being on the H&H &H Connect show today. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Thank you for joining us on this episode of H Plus H Connect. 
We hope you enjoyed our conversation with Jessica and Jamie from Sue Types, where they shared their inspiring journey in the crafting marketplace. The dynamics of running a family business and the invaluable benefits of participating in trade shows like H plus H America. Remember to visit their digital booth on the H plus H Connect platform to check out their latest innovative product. We look forward to seeing you at H plus H America, where you can connect, learn, and be inspired. Until next time, stay creative and keep driving your business forward. Thank you for tuning in to H plus H Connect.